ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا نظير له ولا مثال له شهادة تنجي قائلها من عذاب النار وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا محمدنا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى قالت يا أيها الملأ إني ألقي إلي كتاب كريم إنه من سليمان وإنه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألا تعلوا علي وأتوني مسلمين وقال تعالى في كتابه المجيد من كان يريد العزة فإن العزة لله جميعا وقال تعالى ولله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين ولكن المنافقين لا يعلمون صدق الله العظيم وقد قال نبيه الكريم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والله في عون العبد ما كان العبد في عون أخيه وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام اتق الله حيث ما كنت وأتبع السيئة الحسنة تنمحها وخلق الناس بخلق حسن وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام أنفعكم أنفعكم للناس صدق رسول الله ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في نظم الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون Indeed, all praise All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We sing his praises and we glorify his name Day and night, morning and evening The first and the last Our Lord The Lord of the Lords Our creator, creator of every single thing everything the first and the last king of the kings lord of the world rabbul alamin rabbul izzati wal jalal the lord of glory and majesty his majesty and majesty is his and only his inna al izzata lillahi Jamian. Indeed, all glory, just like praise, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> all of it is His, but He can give some of it to whomever He wills. Salawat and salam be upon Allah's final prophet and messenger, His final prophet and messenger. Our beloved messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his pure family, noble companions, and all true believers until the very last day. Indeed, <clears throat> in this country at least, and maybe in the countries of the Commonwealth, this week, the last weekend, we witnessed some history. It's a historic moment, and we cannot deny that. But my real question to myself and to every Muslim around the world 
who may be living in the United Kingdom or elsewhere where King Charles is now acknowledged as the king of those territories is what have we learned from his atonement and coronation? What are the moments of reflections? What are the lessons that we have learned from it, seeing it, being part of it to some degree by living here? And we seem to be living in peace and safety and security happily, being Muslims, serving our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshipping him in our utmost freedom and free choice of will. I think there are many great lessons that you and I could have learned from that moment in history. And indeed, there are so many. First of all, just the fact that King Charles had to wait more or less his entire life, one's lifetime, 70 plus years is clearly one's lifetime. We've had many janazas recently of people who died 60 plus. They haven't reached the age of 70. Him being the Prince of Wales for 70 odd years almost and waiting all that time to be crowned king of his people, of Allah's people, is a lesson in itself in patience and forbearance. And we have seen that. And what made me think about it is like, how many cases are like his case? Not actually many in the world. Many monarchs didn't have to wait for 40 odd years. And many of us are 40 plus. And did we ever reflect upon our lives of the past four decades, 40 years? Maybe we did at times, but not deep enough, not properly enough. He waited and our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one of his own sermons, these khutbas were much shorter than mine, I have to acknowledge that. He said, Kullu ma huwa atin qareeb. Everything which is destined to happen, happens, will come soon. He was destined to be crowned after all. Despite him having this and that operation when he was 42 and recently wasn't so feeling well. And I don't know what was going through his mind, but it's none of my business in some degree. What is part of my business is the fact I just said, whatever Allah Almighty has decreed to happen, will happen. And no one can stop that. No one can get in its way. And it will happen qariban. It seems like quick. So now, after the crown was put on his head, I think the 70 odd years that he waited was nothing. Didn't feel like a wait until that Saturday. But before maybe was million years to him like. And to us is the same. You want to become head of your department. When you become the head of your department, the 27 odd years that you had to progress through the ranks is nothing. In fact, if I asked you, what are your first memories of your life from your childhood when you started going to a primary school? When did that happen? It was like yesterday. It was like recent. And that's exactly the lesson I want you and I to think of. Allah is asking you and I, how many years did you dwell on this earth? How much did you stay on it? They said we stayed on it for a day, maybe a part of it. And the Quran answers like this. In labistum illa qalila. Not even ba'da yawm, a bit. Qalil, shay qalil, something little. Who are you when you zoom in and out for the history of mankind and all the kings that ruled from east to the west and maybe only corners and parts of the world? Who are you since the beginning of mankind? Who are you since the beginning of time? And then who are you since the beginning of the creation? He is the first, Allah. He's the last, Allah. He is the obvious and he's the hidden, 
Allah is everywhere and He is the only everlasting and will always last. Will always be. Everything else, halikun, will perish. So the Quran says, you stay just a little bit, qalilan. And the point really is not, how long did I have to wait to become the head teacher? How long did I have to wait to become the, the CEO of my company? How long did I have to wait until I became father? How long did I have to wait until I became this and that? That's not the point, how long you had to wait. It's not even the point for how long was I ruling over my people? For how long was I minister of justice in my country of origin? For how long was I a, a, a leader upon my people? The point is that you became father, you became a student, and you became a teacher, and you became a minister, and you became a governor, and maybe you became a king or a queen. That is what matters. Because all those appointments have particular rules and responsibilities and weight. Sovereignty doesn't come just like that. There's heaviness, might to it, weight to it. The real biggest question is, what have you done in your role, in your position? And are you conscious that you will be brought forward and you will be questioned, reckoned for it? How well did you do? Or how did you do? I don't want to say how well. How did you do in your role? And every one of us has some or another role. Kullukum mas'ulun. So the words of our messenger, each and every one of you is responsible. And each and every one of you is a shepherd for something or on behalf of something. So how do we do in our roles? What do we do? And do we know that we're going to stand before Allah? Subhanahu wa so what I'm going to do now is reverse the story of King Charles who had to wait one's lifetime to be crowned king of his, as I say, Allah's people. With king that Allah mentioned in his book and Allah chose to be also one of his prophets and messengers, Sayyidina Sulaiman, maybe arguably the, the best example of a king upon people. Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam, as we understand from the Quran to some degree, but from other traditions, so I'm making reference to previous scriptures and other hadith, like Ibn Kathir has collected a lot of those in his works. Subhanallah, the Quran acknowledges that Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam replaced his father, Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salatu was salam, on his throne. We don't understand fully from the Quran, but some traditions tell us that he took that role. He was basically crowned the king of his people as a child, as a young fellow. And we know many other examples in the history of mankind of kings and queens who became kings in their teens, like they were teenagers or very young. Some of them, children, don't understand anything. So I wonder what is the dua that our king prayed on Saturday or before to Allah, who is his king and everyone else's king. And I know what Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, well, I would like to know and believe that Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam as a child prayed to Allah like this. He said, Allahumma, O oh my Lord, you have made your servant king. You made this servant of yours. We all are servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You made him a king. Despite his young age, he said. And then what did he say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, therefore... Oh Allah, I'm just a little child. He even said like, I don't even know how to get out of my palace and come in. Like that's how young he was. Small, doesn't even know how to dress himself properly and undress. So what am I going to do? How will I rule people that he said, 
are now too many, I can't even count them. I don't even know how many subjects I have in my kingdom. And then he prays to Allah, therefore, O oh Allah, I'm only a little child. I know almost nothing. He said, give your servant. He didn't say, give, your, give this king. Give this person who has become a king. He said, give this servant of yours. Yeah, he repeats that. An understanding mind. Ya Allah. Quran acknowledges that. He asks Allah for an understanding mind to govern thy people. Maliki Nas, Allah is the Lord of the people. Allah is your Lord and my Lord and the Lord of every single thing. Help me, O oh Allah, give me an understanding mind and then the ability so that I am able to discern between good and evil. So that I can understand, I'm just young, I don't understand yet. I'm not a top judge who knows how to analyze evidence, but I would love to see the truth, so I rule by good. I encourage good, and I enjoy good, and I forbid evil. And this prayer from a little child that was destined to take the throne of his father, Sayyidina Dawood wasalam, impressed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah liked his humility and his character at that very point while he was being crowned or after he was crowned as king of Allah's people, Allah's slaves. And what did Allah bestow upon him? An understanding mind that he prayed for. An ability to discern between good and evil. He had the ability to say to whoever it is, you've done injustice, you've oppressed so and so. There are consequences for oppression, injustice. Under my dominion, there will be no volume. I will make sure whatever I can do, I'll establish justice under my dominion. And he was like that. And Allah bestowed upon him favor after favor. Favor after favor. Things that you and I can't even imagine. There are movies about it. Subjecting the winds to you. Do you actually know the power and might of winds? A lot of things in the world cancel because of the speed of the wind. And how it affects the weather. We can be gifted that gift. But we have to show an attitude like Sayyidina Sulaiman did. And what did he pray to Allah as well? Give me kingdom and riches that you, will not, you shall not give to anyone like it after me. And Allah gave him all that. Despite all that, he was ever grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innahu awab. He was oft repenting to Allah. Never ever forgave any favor and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him without acknowledging it duly. He was so grateful to Allah and Allah showed him the way. And this is, I'm, I'm moving to the second lesson. There's so many lessons, I'm just telling you genuinely, but another lesson, what I learned, during his atonement, you all, most of you have seen the scene when King Charles, the robes were taken of him, stood there in utmost, I would say, humility, it's like a humble mortal human being, nothing more. With a simple, wearing a simple white shirt, waiting to be anointed with blessed olive oil from Palestine. We believe it's blessed land and why not? To me, that was a mighty lesson in humility. Despite all the gifts that he was gifted, this glove, that ring, this, the crown, etc., all the robes, everything. Everything. There was a moment when he didn't wear any of that. And that immediately reminded me of a couple of things. The Quran says, it's in one of those, one of those calligraphy discs we have in this mosque, the story of Qarun. The Quran mentions, show favor, righteousness, 
favor, bounties that Allah gave you to the servants of Allah, Allah's people, like we said, like Allah showed it to you. But don't forget your portion of this worldly life. And what is your portion? Commentators almost all agreed. It's nothing but the white robes that you will be shrouded in after you have left this dunya. Kefen. That's all you're going to have. And the fact that his shirt was white was such a, I don't want to say coincidence, Allah's decree, really. So it was such a strong image that really stayed with me and will stay with me for the rest of my life. So whatever you are, whoever you are, you can't forget that one day you will be brought before Allah and you won't carry anything. You won't have a fanciful diamond ring, nothing. You'll be actually wrapped in a white cloth which, which is like nothing, worth no money almost. So that is a mighty lesson that I take. And the final thing which uh, I would like to narrate to you is, okay, I think I have four or five minutes, is that story of uh, Rabbi ibn Amir, that uh, Allah's messenger, our messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sent as his envoy, ambassador, to the great Rustum. And he has this conversation with him. And to me, the Quran is so powerful and keeps repeating this notion. You people, you are so intelligent. And you seem to want to occupy a high position. You are after some kind or degree of glory. All of us are after some kind of status. That's fine. But from whom and what and how is the question. Who do you attribute your successes to? And how did you succeed in the first place and why? Remember all glories with Allah. That was the first thing I said in the khutbah. And it is like that. So many of our Muslim scholars have said, what's wrong with our people? They stand at the doors of worldly kings and rulers, governors and muluk, and they think they'll be given, you know, some ordains. They'll become OBE and this and that, and they'll become glorious and amazing. <laughs> it's not there, I'm sorry. It's a wrong address, wrong door to knock on. The true glory lies in praying and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying to Allah, being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here is a clear, wonderful story of a companion of our messenger who comes to talk to an emperor, not just a king, an emperor, someone who has a whole empire under him. And he said to the emperor, Rustum, نحن قوم بعثنا الله لنخرج الناس من عبادة العباد إلى عبادة رب العباد. Simple sentence, but how much intelligence, eloquence, courage, wisdom was in this very statement. He said to that emperor, Rustam, he said, we are simple people. Like, he's even like, the, his ministers will make comments like, look at his clothes, it's like, he's clearly a shepherd or someone who came looking after camels or something. So he said, we are simple people, but Allah has given us a place in history, a position, so that we help people come out from the slavery, worshiping of other people, into worshipping the Lord of the people, the Rabb of the slaves. That's our mission. That's our position. That's our role in the history of mankind. And Rustam is struggling to understand this. Like, what is he saying? Like, is he just trying to mesmerize me with his words and speech? So he calls his most clever man to counsel with them, to consult with them. And he tells them, Look, this is what this person is saying. And he asks him before that, he said, anta? He said, are you like uh, the ruler or the leader of your people? He said, la. He said, no, I'm not. But he said, nahnu al-muslimun kal-jasad al-wahid. 
He said, I'm not a leader or a ruler of my people. I don't have such a title. The messenger just sent me as an envoy. But he didn't say, here's your crown, go. And here is your contract. It's until you die, you are the, the, the supreme judge of my people. Until you die, you are the minister of justice, like that. No. He didn't give him any titles like that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he sent him with very clear and important historic mission. He said, we Muslims are like one body. He said, Adnahum yujiru ala a'alahum wal'aks. He said, we are just like one body, one people. The lowest of it will actually protect the highest and vice versa. So whoever sees that a Muslim brother is in need, you jump to help your Muslim brother. You don't go, oh, how many titles do I have? Does he have that? You don't do that. You just quick, quickly go and help your Muslim brother. And that's why I cited that hadith, Wallahu fi awnil abdi. Allah is with the one who is always not hesitating but hasting almost ready to help his Muslim brother Allah is with him so he says this conversation and then he counsels his ministers and they say he said what do you say about this guy what he's saying this man and they said to him the Rustam are you really taking this fool seriously are you going to abandon your religion and the religion of your forefathers for what he says? Just look at him. Look at his clothes. Look how miserable he is. He's like, like a beggar. And then he said, Rustum turned to his counselors, Wailakum. You've been bewitched. Deceit. It's a deceit, yeah? You have been deceived by dunya and its amusements and riches. Gharratkumul hayatu dunya. You are looking at his clothes. Look at his robe. How long is it? Five meters behind me? Or is it a simple black robe? La tanzuru ila thiyabihi. Wanzuru ila ra'i. He said like that. Wanzuru ila ra'i. That's how Ibn Kathir narrated it in his Al-Bidai. But he, he means ila ma yaqul. Wasma'u. La tanzuru ila thiyabihi. Wasma'u ila ma yaqul. Stop looking at the outward appearance. Stop looking at somebody's clothes or car or house or garden. But look at the essence of that person. Look at the value and the values that that person has. Look at what he says. He said, Arra'i means reasoning, thinking. Look at his thinking. And then he says, be honest. Have you ever heard anything more glorious? and straight than this speech, the speech of this simple man that you claim. And they even called him a bad name. I don't want to even tell you what he said. They called him a bad name, like really disgusting name. And he turns and he, he this is like embarrassing them, humiliated all of them in front of that person that they called a name that was definitely not befitting. Doesn't matter how patched his clothes were and simple and cheap. He said, he taught them a lesson. You don't look at that. You actually were supposed to listen to what he says. And it was that same Iman, belief and conviction, that conquered Rustam and his kingdom and empire. And beyond that, with simple people like Rabbi ibn Amir and the rest of the Prophet's companions with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, at their helm. And I end this little khutbah, reminder, with this saying of Ibrahim, a great uh, Muslim scholar, who said, He said the nobility is in humility. If you, are, if you want to become noble, sharif, remember you have to become humble. Mutawadi' In your prayer, in your fasting, uh, in your walking, in your drinking, in your sitting, in everything, in your writing books, everything you do, in your sermon, everything, be humble. What izzu fi taqwa, he said. Glory lies in piety, being God conscious. That's what he said. He said, izzu fi taqwa. Where is then freedom and liberty? Al huriya, wal huriya tu fil qanaa, he said. The true freedom lies in contentment. 
So if you and I want to be noble, and we indeed need to, we have to be humble, like the king was humbled on Saturday while he, during his anointment. And if you and I want to be glorious, know that all glory is with Allah. He can give it to us whenever he wants and as much as he wants. But we must worship him and be conscious of him. Taqwa, pious. And if you and I want to relieve ourselves of all anxieties and stresses and everything else and be properly freed and liberated, then we have to be contented with all what Allah gave us. If you and I were not destined to be any member of any royal family, let it be, I'm still happy. And if you and I were to become princes and queens, whatever, kings, it's part of Allah's decree. And if you and I ended up being a cleaner for the rest of our career, it doesn't mean you are not noble. It doesn't mean you are not glorious. It doesn't mean you are not useful to your community. You perhaps could be the very cause of Allah's best blessings and grace descending upon your people, your community, and the rest of living beings. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بارك الله لنا ولكم ولسه المسلمين والمسلمات الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله صحبه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكرما لفخامة شأن شرف الصفيه فقد قال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين ويا أرحم الراحمين وأذل الشرك والمشكين يا رب العالمين ويا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا إلى الحق وإلى صراط مستقيم وهدي ولاة أمورنا إلى الحق وإلى صراط مستقيم إلى إلى العمل بكتاب الله وسنة خير وسنة خير بشر يا رب العالمين رسولنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم وفقنا لما تحبه وترضاه من صالح القول والعمل اللهم إنا نسلك حبك وحب من أحبك وحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك يا رب العالمين ويا أرحم الراحمين إنا نسلك يا رب العالمين إنا نسألك من الخيرات كلها يا رب العالمين إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار اللهم ربنا برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين يا رحيم يا رحمن سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيموا الصلاة